if we're actually coming to design these columns and we're looking at the, especially if we're looking at even like shortcut methods and we're doing uh, simple calculations, what we actually need to do is decompose the, the double columns back into an equivalent set of simple distillation columns because that's what we've got design rules for. So if we take our side strip arrangement, <coughs> what you can see is what we actually have is a column we could represent as one and two that has a vapor passing out of it and a liquid passing into it. Okay. <coughs> which is then passing a vapour onto the next part of the column. So that would act like a partial condenser on top of that column, where the partial condenser is taking our total vapour feed and making our liquid feed amount back and the rest of the vapour going into region 3 of our column. <coughs> If we mirror that across to our new second column, that was exciting, uh, <clears throat> we basically have a vapor feed and a liquid feed going into that second column. Okay? <coughs> and what we have, so we have a vapor feed <coughs> and we have a liquid side stream. And in fact, that liquid side stream is essentially to be one stage above our feed stage. And that feed stage essentially represents that partial condenser. Okay? And then what we can do is just use our, our design rules that we already know of on this column and on this column essentially add all of that together and that would give us the total we could then we know how many stages are in section three we can then put that on top of our known number of stages in the other sections. <coughs> we can also do the same for the side rectifier. <coughs> but in this case, because we've added section 4 on the bottom of our first column, <coughs> how we represent that is actually adding our partial reboiler back onto the bottom of our first column. So the red represents our liquid passing out the first column and the feed into the second column. And in this case, our second column has a vapor side stream and it's one stage to learn our feed stage. And again, that one feed stage is essentially our partial reboiler to the system. And if we've got a prefractionator or a dividing wall column, so we can start from a dividing wall column, split that out into a prefractionator, and then the top part of our column actually is a side stripper decomposition, is identical to a side stripper decomposition, and the bottom part of our columns is identical to a side rectifier decomposition. And then the total flow of the yellow streams at the top and the bottom of our final column, that's our total flow rate of our middle component coming out of our prefractionator system. So what we've done is We've introduced these new, potentially more energy efficient <coughs> distillation designs <coughs> that we can now put into our sequences. And we've shown that if we want to actually design these, and design these especially by like, the shortcut method or by hand, we can <coughs> decompose them into representative distillation colours. 
And those representative distillation columns are always either a simple distillation column or a distillation column with a side stream. Okay? So although we've got quite a selection of different columns and different arrangements, we can always we can make them into simple distillation column and a distillation <coughs> column with a side stream. <coughs> so if we think about our shortcut methods, <coughs> all of those methods work on simple distillation columns, and they'll also work on distillation columns with a side stream, apart from the Underwood equation. Okay? which gives us our minimum reflux ratio. But what we can do is we can actually have a modified version of the Underwood equation that allows us to have cot distillation columns with side streams. And then we can just use the short, same shortcut calculations taking into account these as well. So if we have a, a side stream above the field, what we can do is we still take exactly the same equation for the first part of our Underwood equation. But for our second part, instead of just taking the composition of our top product, what we actually do is base this on the total flow rate and total composition of the top product and our side stream. And then from this, what we can do is we can get a vapor flow rate for our column. And with that vapor flow rate, we could then look at costs and the distillation column and put that in looking at vapor load as we discussed about the performance indicators for the sequence of columns. And also if we've got a, a side stream below our feed, again, we keep exactly the same form of that first equation. But then we can base up our second equation on a balance the bottom half of our distillation column. It's a negative sign because it's the bottom half of our distillation column. And we take again the combined composition and flow rate of the bottom product and our side stream. And then we can again find our minimum base flow rate, which we can again put into um, performance indicators to check that distillation column for how that fits into the, the selections we've made. To look at the complex columns and how we can actually design and decompose these complex columns and then modify the Underwood equation to allow us to do the shortcut calculations for these complex or thermally coupled columns.